Must have been a bad couple of weeks. It's hard to imagine Wolverine being portrayed by anything other than Hugh Jackman's rippling abs, but Jackman actually was an X-Men writer Chris Claremont's first choice to play the character. And no. It's not like Claremont just wanted some other shredded slice of attractive man meat with luscious locks growing out of certain parts of his face. See, if Claremont had gotten his way, the role of Logan would have gone to Bob Hoskins. But I didn't do Get nothing! Him. Are you telling us that you can arrest a guy for being a plumber? Get out of here! Yes, the man best known to most of us as the schlubby plumber in the Super Mario movie and the schlubby detective in Who Framed Roger Rabbit was once considered a possible candidate for the world's next great schlubby superhero. Save me. Don't ever kiss me again. Now don't get me wrong, Bob Hoskins is a legend and a fantastic actor, but as a rotund British curmudgeon, not a lot about him screams defender of the free world. But that said, Claremont actually did have some pretty solid reasoning behind wanting to cast Hoskins, other than as some elaborate prank. Claremont really liked Hoskins in the Tom Selleck movie Lassiter, which is about a jewel thief, even though it sounds like it's about a handsy Pixar executive. Claremont loved how angry Hoskins got in the movie and how he'd shove around big ol' Selleck, even though Selleck is much taller and has way more mustache. After all, Wolverine in the comics is pretty short and pretty angry, whereas Hugh Jackman is 6'3 and loves being in musicals. But realistically, Hoskins wasn't particularly close to donning the mutton chops because Brian Singer's first choice was the friggin' gladiator himself, Russell Crowe. Remember in the early aughts, Crowe was the world's biggest movie star, so much so that when Osama bin Laden was spitballing fun new ideas to destabilize America, bin Laden's first thought was kidnapping and assassinating Russell Crowe, who is not an American but is pretty violent, which I guess is an American thing, sort of. Thankfully, a French policewoman caught wind of the plot and alerted the FBI, who in turn warned Crowe that bin Laden was trying to martyr him out of the zeitgeist. From then on, for several years, the actor didn't attend any award ceremony or Hollywood party without being accompanied by over a dozen federal agents in disguise, until 2005 when the FBI told Crowe he was clear of the threat. Which is good, because according to Crowe, I never fully understood what the f was going on. And speaking of not knowing what was going on, and also getting this video back on track, Crowe actually turned down Wolverine because he didn't want to be known as the wolf guy. See, he'd recently finished filming Gladiator in which he played a character who had a pet wolf and a wolf themed armor, which kind of makes sense. Oh, the pet wolf stuff wasn't in the final cut? Oops. But even then, according to Singer, Crow was willing to play Wolverine, but only if the character was bald. So maybe Hoskins wouldn't have been so bad and Russell Crowe probably would have been fine, if a little too hairless for my taste. But what would have definitely been bad is if the producers had gone with another off the wall choice they were considering, misfit singer Glenn Danzig, best known for having a big ass pile of bricks in his front yard forever. Also singing. He got so far along in the process that he apparently even went in and did a reading for the role. Now in some ways, this also makes sense, right? Danzig is only 5 feet 4 inches and he's also a huge comic fan. But then you realize Danzig claimed his take on the character would be quote, less gay than Hugh Jackman's. And I think we are all going to be much happier never having to deal with whatever the hell that means. 